Hello VPro members. So today we got a video for you in regards to a 2008 Audi S6 V10 engine, 5.2 liter. And this ECU came all the way from Kansas City. The customer pretty much confirmed that the one ECU that controls cylinder six to 10 is faulty, where cylinder nine and 10 has some short. And so because of that, they wanted us to clone the data from the original ECU and the ECU here is a MED 9.1 ECU, Bosch. And so they wanted us to clone it onto a donor ECU. And it's very important with these Bosch ECUs to make sure that the part number matches because what typically the case is, the part number is sometimes associated to the hardware configuration. And so if you have a different part number, the hardware might be different. And when you clone the data, it may not work. So it's very important and very critical to make sure that the part number when cloning onto an ECU matches. And like we mentioned earlier, this S6 is a V10 engine. And typically how it works is you have two cylinder banks, one where the ECU, ECU number one, controls cylinders one to five, that's five cylinders. And then ECU two controls cylinders six to 10. And so in this case, the diagnostics pretty much concluded that cylinder nine and 10 was faulty. They made sure that the coil, the spark, everything related to cylinder nine and 10 was good. The compression uh, was no problem there. And so they concluded that mechanically everything is fine. However, the only thing that it can finalize is that the driver from the ECU that controls nine and 10 is faulty. Now, one way to do this repair is by opening up the case, tracing through the wiring diagram, which pin controls cylinder nine and 10, using a multimeter, tracing in there, finding the components that actually drives those cylinders and then replacing them. However, in this case, we wanted to make sure that we are able to solve this issue by getting a low mileage ECU from another vehicle and cloning the data over. A lot of times this is simpler, faster and easier to do. And we're gonna be using a tool called Flex made by Magic Motorsport. And we are the official distributor of that tool. So if you are interested in buying that tool, please reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to assist you further. So what we're gonna show you next onto the video is the software and the connection points. And then we go from there. So here we're gonna be taking the wires as well as selecting the right pinouts that will connect to the ECU pins depending on the sizes. So you have different size pinouts here and then you have the wiring that would connect onto the flex unit into the ECU. So what we have here is the Flex Magic Motorsport interface and we are going to be searching MED 9.1 it doesn't really matter which vehicle it's from. So in our case, it's from an S6. So we can come here for that. But even if you select another one, it's the same protocol. So as long as the same ECU type is selected, you are good to go. And as you can see here, there's three different methods of reading the data from the ECU. You're able to read it by OBD. Now keep in mind when reading by OBD, you are not retrieving the full memory content of the control unit. You're only getting the map information. Whereas by bench and boot mode, you're able to get the full memory content. And so in our case, we're gonna select bench because we're gonna be doing a full clone and that's what we need. So the connector manual is right here. You hover above the pins, you align it to how it matches on the screen there. And then here we have A1. And of course you need to make sure that you have the proper sized female that would go in and connect to the pinouts of the ECU. So right here we have A1. Here we have A5, which is ground. So we already have that connected. And again, we made sure that we have the right pin connects through. And then here we have B3. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pins from the top right there. One right next to it is a three right next to what we just connected. And then the third one from here is a two. One, two, three, a two. And we have two more connection points on the other plug. We have B7, which is two from the second row. All right, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, B8. 
So there we are. So we have all the connection points connected and we can move on to the next point here where we need to connect to the ECU. And as you can see here, the voltage and the amps, it's attempting to connect to the processor. And there we go, connect finished. And if we go through the log here, you can see that it detected the microprocessor, which is an MPC 563-4. It connected to the external flash. This is the internal flash of the processor. This is the external flash of the processor or of the flash, which the processor also talks to. And then you have an external EEPROM as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you can notice here, which is very critical and important, the type of sectors that you have. So RW stands for read and write, which means this sector can be read and can be written as well. As a matter of fact, all the internal flash sectors in the processor can be read and written, which is good news. And the external flash that's on the board is also fully readable and writable. And that is also great news, which means you're able to fully clone this without doing any data manipulation. Sometimes you have certain ECUs that might show you here as OTP. And what that stands for is one time programmable. And if you come across ECUs where you have one OTP or several OTPs, you might need to do some file manipulation. And by just doing full cloning, direct one-to-one -one cloning, it may not work. So keep that in mind. And that actually holds on to the MED17 ECUs from the Volkswagen Audis they have OTP sectors and by doing a direct one-to-one -one clone, it will not work. So that's a critical important information to note. Otherwise you'd be pulling your hair when things don't work after you get a successful read and write and you don't know what's happening. And it's because those OTP sectors are different and cannot be rewritten. So now that we are connected to this ECU, you can see that we are able to disconnect. We're able to read the internal flash, able to read the external flash, read the external EEPROM or a full backup that reads all of them. And then we can write. So in our case, we're we're gonna do a full backup to read all the different memory devices and save it for writing later on. So basically it's reading sector by sector, starting with the internal flash, and there's eight sectors there. Make sure the checksum is good. And moving on to the external flash, we have 39 sectors. So it's reading each and every sector of that external flash. And there you have it, requesting us to save backup only or save all. The difference here is save backup only would save a compressed file. Save all would save the individual internal flash separately, external flash and the EEPROM and the compressed file as well. So we always do save all. And if we open up the compressed file right here, go into dump, you can see that we have the external flash, sorry, external EEPROM, the external flash, internal flash, and the compressed file as well. That includes everything. So now that we have this in hand, we're able to rewire this onto the spare donor ECU and then pretty much the same wiring diagram, connect to it. We always suggest reading the donor and saving that just in case you need to rewrite it back in. And so we read it, we write it back in here, make sure everything is successful by using the write command. We would select full backup, select the full backup and then write, and then everything is good to go from there. So in today's video, what we were able to show you is while having a defective cylinder nine and 10 circuitry, in the ECU, we were able to read the full memory content of this ECU using Flex, which took a few minutes to do. And once we read it, we were able to connect it into the spare with the matching part number that we talked about. So in this case, the Bosch part number is 0261S02484. And also you have the 4F1910552G. They're both an MED 9.1. And so matching part numbers, and we were able to write the full memory content into the donor successfully. And now we're able to send this back to the customer. And all they gotta do is connect the CCU onto the vehicle and it's plug and play. Now, the nice thing about having a programmer such as this, which is a professional tool, it allows you to read and write onto used modules. And this is critical for a lot of shops because if you were to go through Audi and Volkswagen, you would have to buy a brand new ECU in a lot of cases, which would cost you thousands of dollars and then have that programmed in using their factory software. So a lot of mechanic shops or other shops that work with vehicles do not have the capability of owning these factory softwares. And so they're limited with their capabilities. But if you're a shop that's looking to expand your service to be able to offer this for your clients, reach out to us visit us at www.vpro.ca. Get a tool such as this, and this will enable you to solve customers' issues like these. And so hopefully you learned something here. Again, when it comes to vehicle electronics, if you have the right tools, if you have the right 
knowledge, if you have the right expertise, there's a lot that you can do that the typical dealers cannot do. And you can save a lot of time and money and headache as well. So hopefully you're learning from these videos. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for the shares and likes. Please subscribe, please share the videos around. A lot more new exciting videos are coming up. There is going to be a new VPro Academy course where you can sign up and learn about soldering, about vehicle electronics, about key programming, about wiring, troubleshooting. So make sure that you're onto our mailing list. Visit vpro.ca and until next time, take care.